Today is Saturday, April 24th, and I wanted to talk about the Scorpio full moon. Uh, the Scorpio full moon will be on the 26th and 27th, depending where you are in the world, and we are in Taurus, and if you didn't know, that's how you know what sign the full moon is going to be. It's exactly opposite of the sign that you're in. So that's because, you know, it's full moon, it's fully reflecting the sun, so it's right across from it. So it's directly across on the zodiac wheel. So because the sun is in Taurus, the full moon will be in Scorpio. So that only works for full moons. That's just in case you didn't know. <laughs> uh, and the new moon is always in the sign that the sun is in. Um, because it's dark, so it's pretty close to the sun in that aspect, um, or at least not reflecting any light. Okay, so that's how you know that. Just wanted to let you know that. So, the Scorpio full moon, as we are in Taurus, Scorpio is going to bring up a lot of emotions here. Today and tomorrow until Sunday, we're still in a Libra moon. So what I'm going to say here is Libra involves relationships, revolves fairness, um, involves justice and balance. Libra is about society and others. So in this case, what I'm feeling is as we move towards this full moon, you may notice different interactions with people, different things happening outside of you in society. Recognizing, realizing things aren't going the way you thought they would in relationships in the outside world, respectively. Then, as we move into this full moon, this is more about finding out why within yourself. This is a subconscious... Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and Mars, but in this case, this is very unique because the day after the full moon, and depending on where you are in the world, the day of the full moon, Pluto will be retrograding on the 27th. So here where I am in Florida, in America, we'll have the full moon on Tuesday, and then by Wednesday, Pluto is retrograding which means um, all the planets were going forward, they were all direct, and now Pluto is going to just stop. So if you think about the momentum all the planets were having, and then Pluto, who's way, way out there and takes a long time to move through science, he's, Pluto is very powerful. Pluto is about transformation. And he does this, Pluto does this through destroying, destruction. Pluto in the tarot would be the tower card. So this is about shakeups, death, transformation, and transitioning. So all of these aspects are represented in Scorpio as well. So because this moon is directly across from Taurus and we have Mercury, Venus, the Sun, and Uranus, all in Taurus, this Scorpio full moon is in opposition to all of these aspects. So Mercury in Taurus is about how we think and communicate. This is going to be about uh, materialism, how it feels. The way you think may be more about what you're seeing and hearing, what you actually feel going on around you. Uranus is the rebel. Uranus brings change in an unexpected way. Surprising ways. And the tower is surprising as well. Pluto and Scorpio have surprising secretive elements as well. So expect some things to come out. Uranus, the rebel, can be shocking. So, some things may come out on the world stage, some things may come out in relationships, 
that were being held secret, okay? Some things may come up in your subconscious that you need to heal. Past trauma, childhood trauma, victimhood, uh, as well as guilt, shame, blaming others, okay? So, Scorpio is going to show us where, where we need to change uh, for our own lives. And it's going to be showing us through, as I'm predicting, this Libra energy as we work through this. Scorpio full moon is showing, bringing things to light. Okay, and Scorpio is about the occult, the dark, the hidden. And it's also about transforming, just like Pluto. So Pluto in retrograde, the day following, or the day of, depending where you are, this Scorpio moon is really going to bring a ton of energy to this Scorpion moon. I'm hoping, and it's possible, that we decide we're going to stand up now after coming to many realizations or things coming out or shocking things coming out or secrets or whatever, we realize as a people we're ready to stand up and take our power back. Pluto wants you to make change. And just like the tower in the tarot, it's always good. But it takes a lot to get there. Things have to be destroyed and ripped down, buildings torn down to shreds before you can rebuild. It always ends up better. But working through that, especially this scorpion energy, is going to be feeling possibly harsher. Um, having Venus in Taurus kind of lightens it a little bit. And the sun in Taurus kind of lightens it a little bit. It's more about feeling. What do you want? Does it feel good? Is it comforting? Also, we have Mars um, in Cancer. Now. So Mars has moved out of Gemini and it's in Cancer. And Cancer involves emotions as well. So we have Mars, who's usually aggressive and on it, moving into a slower sign of Cancer, which is more about finding the things that you want, reevaluating the things and working towards the things that you want. Mars still wants to move forward, but you have to move through this muck of emotion that you have been neglecting, avoiding, stuffing down into the subconscious uh, or subconsciously. It doesn't mean that you're doing it on purpose. So this is an exciting time because things will be coming out. Um, decisions need to be made and you still have some time to do that. Also, on your path spiritually, Scorpio is a is a good way to delve into more of a spiritual energy through this full moon. Full moon are also representative of the culmination of things. And because of this full moon, now you're going to have about two to three weeks to work on and heal these things. Now, if you know about astrology or you know your birth chart um, or you don't you can look it up if you have your birth time and city it's very easy there's all kind of websites that give you your chart for free you just have to have that information so what you want to do is once you have your birth chart you want to pull up where in your chart is Scorpio and where in your chart is Pluto um, and you can look at Taurus and Cancer and that will give you more of an idea of where you'll be seeing these effects. So for some people, Scorpio is in the second house, which is money, your money, your value. So in that case, you may be uh, going through your own personal values, taking a deeper look at what you hold valuable in your life. What is it about you, your own worth, your own value? And what is it about your material world? You could be um, needing to check your budget, etc.
okay for some it's gonna be like in the seventh house which is the house of relationships so in that case you may see secrets coming out about relationships deep hidden feelings coming up in relationships where you may have been avoiding it and changes need to be made doesn't mean you'll necessarily be ending the relationships although full moons and Scorpio is a really good time to let go of anything so it's possible that you will end relationships or just keep toxic people and relationships at a distance so that may be a decision that you're coming to during this time or noticing habits career uh, Many people are going to be thinking about their career right now and how they want to move forward and Pluto's going to have a lot to do with that. Anytime a planet goes into retrograde, it's asking you to look at something. It's asking you to question things a little bit more, take a deeper look. And Pluto's going to be here retrograde for five months. It will come back direct on October 6th. So we have a lot of time to figure out this Pluto energy and I hope that we come together as a people, stand in our own power and sovereignty, and decide to fight back and fight for our rights and our freedoms. However, if that doesn't happen, at least individually, you can take a stand. You can notice what needs to change. Allow that transformation. So surrender is really important right now. Being able to observe how you feel with the scorpion energy and the Mars and Cancer energy. They're both asking you Take another look. And all these planets in Taurus are saying, how does it feel? Is it real? Is it tangible? Is it what you expected? Many of us are realizing this world that we thought we were moving towards is not what we were expecting. Or our relationships are turning out in ways we weren't expecting. And so it's time to really look at it. How do I feel about it? What are these emotions that are coming up? And allow yourself to feel that. This is a time where these planets, these signs are asking you, the moon and Cancer, which are both representative of each other, are both asking you to look deeper at these emotions. Allow yourself to heal. Allow yourself to heal so we can all move forward. We all have to do this work. And the way that you allow for the healing is to just feel it. Feel the sadness, feel the pain, feel the hurt from your childhood, feel the abandonment, feel the anger. Allow it to come up and just sit with it. And you may have to do that several times. You may need to cry it out. You may need to, and, and as you do, it comes with that deeper understanding of, of even the revelations from beneath that. What caused that pain? Is it real for you still? I mean, is it true for you still? You know, so many times that from our childhood, we, we, we deal with abandonment. We deal with so many issues, pain, uh, and not fully understanding, not getting the attention you need as a child, whatever it is worry you know some some kids had to take care of their parents they had to take on responsibility for their parents at a very young age and that turns into control issues you know as you as you get older so what i invite you to do during this time of exponential change and healing and shock and different unique ways with your honest and taurus energy is to ask yourself if those things are still true for you today and stop blaming others and stop shaming yourself and stop feeling the guilt and just recognize who you were in the moment when the pain occurred and was it true then probably not the things we tell ourselves the feelings we take on the stuff that we bury down deep was it true for you then probably not is it still true for you now no. Okay, so that's how we let it go. We acknowledge that the pain is there, and then we want to figure out where it's coming from. Whether it was our parents, um, whatever we had to go through. 
it's time to let that stuff go and realize it doesn't have to be true for you still. Self-worth, um, money issues, you know, feeling not good enough, abandonment, afraid people are going to leave you, control freaks. There's so many aspects of our lives that we don't even realize we've become or, or what we were doing that stem from this old pain. So let it come up. Let it come up. Heal it. Invite it to be healed. Recognize where, where it's coming from. Like fear uh, sometimes comes out in anger. Um, and also control. Fear is one of the main root causes of everything. So I invite you to do this healing this week. Be aware that for many of us, it is time to let go of situations or people. It doesn't have to be forever, but if it's toxic and it's harming your daily life or stressing you in any way, it's okay to take a distance from that. Because right now we're all going to be feeling some heavy stuff coming through and we're going to have to push through it and work through it. So that being said, I want to go through a quick all signs. I'm going to do a couple oracle and then maybe just like two tarot just to figure out each sign what we're really going to be working through during this full moon. Um, maybe just to give you a better idea. Most of you will already know what it is you're working through. Uh, family issues are going to be coming up a lot and household issues. Okay, because cancer is the home and Mars is there and he just got there and he's like Ugh. it's like really having to figure out what's happening here so issues in the home issues with family it could just be that you want to revamp your house or paint or you're needing to spend more time with your family or you're needing to balance your work family life and figure out uh, how you can divide the time better Anything in the home or, or with family. Um, it could also be involving property. Some of you are buying or selling a home. Cancer is anything about the home. So, let's see here. Sit down. Fancy has the bone. So if you hear her chewing on her bone, sorry. Okay, spirit, please guide us with information and clear interpretations for all signs, starting with Capricorn, for this full moon in Scorpio, and let's include the Pluto retrograde. Okay, this energy. For Capricorn, what do they need to know for the full moon in Scorpio on April 26th for Capricorn? I'm going to take these. I feel like they wanted to flip. 22. Okay. I've been seeing 22 everywhere. 222. Two, two. April 22nd. I had this feeling like something big is happening here. Okay. 22 is the number of the master builder. I know. This means you're building something. You're working towards something. Anything you want can be manifested now. And you are blessed. This card says blessed, Capricorn. And we have number 10, which is completion, unfinished symphony. So how ironic that number 10, which means completion, would be a representative of this card, unfinished, unfinished symphony. So this means whatever you're building towards, A, you're blessed. You need to take that and run with it. This energy of having what you need, feeling capable. Okay, moving towards this, this thing, it's not completed yet, it's not done, it requires your attention, you're still required here to build. Okay, so what are you creating? You're not done yet. What are you still working on? And I want to get one of the Oracle of the Seven Energies, both of these decks, Wisdom of the Oracle and Oracle of the Seven Energies, they're both by Colette Baron-Reed. 
She's awesome. Her decks are awesome. Her oracle decks. I love them. Please tell me about Capricorn, the full moon in Scorpio. So, hopefully, uh, Capricorn, you will be feeling this harder than most because Pluto is in your sign. Pluto is still in the sign of Capricorn and it, it's completely stopping in your sign. So, uh, this is going to be about hard work, effort, stability, security. And um, so things could come up, things you weren't expecting, things regarding the home, selling the home with Mars and Cancer. Okay, working on things at home, working on relationships. Scorpio always brings up the deeper hidden feelings, so allow for that to come up. Okay, and we have the Rose's Kiss, number nine, and Shining Through, number 30. Let's read these, because this is a new deck, so I don't know much about these cards. Water. The Rose's Kiss. Okay, see? It's very pretty. Number nine, joy, experiencing pleasure, deep satisfaction and enjoyment, desires, acknowledged, and five sensory reality, which is Taurus, okay? And there's so many planets in Taurus right now. So take a deep breath and center on the feeling of joy. Can you allow your senses to awaken and connect with your innate desire to experience all that life has to offer? Pleasure is part of life. Let yourself surrender to it today. What were we just talking about? Surrender. Okay, and this blessed, being in this appreciative, grateful state allows you to better build and create and manifest. You've got this unfinished symphony. So use this Rose's Kiss energy, this Taurian energy of just sitting in the joy and, and the, indulging in the senses and the desire. Does it feel like how you want it to feel? Does it look like how you wanted it to look? How can you uh, better accomplish that? And then we have number 30, shining through. This is really nice for you, Capricorn. Key concepts, self-expression without filters or masks, authentic communication, being proud of who you are, shining in the world, refusing to make yourself small just to belong, right? Staying authentic to who you are and what you want, how it feels and how it looks. How do you want it to look? Don't be afraid to speak out and say what you need. Scorpio bringing up these emotions is going to have you revisiting these, these places in your life, these relationships, these jobs, or whatever it is you're working through, and understanding more of, is this where I want to be? Does this feel good? What needs to change here? And Pluto retrograding is going to say, stand in your power. Acknowledge what needs to be changed. And sometimes things have to end in order for that to happen. Lay down. Night night. Lay down. She's just walking around with her bone. She's like, look at my bone, look at my bone. Just lay down. I hear your little feet clicking constantly. Okay, shining through. Allowing yourself to shine through. Let's get the, one of these moon cards because we're dealing with the full moon. Spirit, tell me about Capricorn. Tell me about Capricorn for the full moon in Scorpio. Luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius. So some of you may have Sagittarius in your chart, dealing with Sagittarius, etc., etc. Okay, uh, luck is on your side, and this feels really good. So Pluto may be asking you, and Scorpio full moon may be asking you to revisit a few things because Saturn wants to give you some blessings. Okay, I'm really feeling that. Saturn is in Aquarius still and wanting to give blessings. Are you stable and secure in who you are? Are you ready to shine your authentic light? You are already blessed and it's because of uh, your ability to work through anything, Capricorn. So luck is now on your side. So what is it that you want to create? Because you have this unfinished symphony. You have this, this uh, dream, this thing within, within reach. So what is it that you're going to do? 
with this energy? How can you move through this energy? Tell me about Capricorn. What about full moon and Scorpio? Capricorn, what could Capricorn be dealing with? Family, okay. Blood ties or inner circle. Family matters is what I've been talking about. Relationships. And then we have journal, writing, diary, keeping notes. So as you work through these emotions, it's going to be best for you, especially so you can revisit it uh, and to work through this healing is to journal. Write it down. Write down your dreams. Okay, we're still uh, healing through dreams and fighting in dreams and talking to people we haven't seen in 20 years in dreams. So, journaling, family issues may be coming up for you. What, uh, let's just pull some regular tarot just to see. Two, we'll pull two cards please for Capricorn. What are they dealing with? What is the main... Too many is coming out for you. Waiting. Okay. Wanting, someone comes in wanting to take action, okay? And you're Sagittarian. More Sagittarian energy. Luck is on your side, okay? This is Archangel Michael, Temperance card. Sagittarian energy saying, hey, you're just going to have to wait this out, though. Temper more. Alchemize more. It might not be the right timing for something that's occurring. So any retrograde is going to say, take a minute. Okay, let's look at this a different way. So it's possible that for some of you, waiting will actually be the luck that's on your side. There is something about taking action or someone someone stepping in, taking action or communication coming in that actually I'm getting maybe forcing you to wait. We have Page of Pentacles, which is a new opportunity when it comes to money. This could be something having to do with the home or a new job, new promotion. Something comes in and it changes things for you. We have Queen of Wands, which is going to be uh, you standing in your power, very confident energy, or you're dealing with the Queen of Wands. This is Leo energy, Sagittarius or Aries, I suppose. It's fire. It's being authentic. It's, it's shining through. That's what it is. It's you being confident and, and really fighting for your worth not backing down. And then we have this Five of Swords energy, which is kind of like um, wanting victory over someone. Sometimes it's a feeling of defeat where someone has gotten the best of you. But it's a, it's a feeling kind of like the Seven of Swords, which would be like not fully trusting someone or feeling like someone's trying to get over, like someone's trying to get one over on you. Okay, so in legal matters, issues with the home or family, you may want to take a minute and wait this out. Don't be so quick to, to agree to things. Whatever communication comes in, you're going to need to stand up for yourself here. Uh, it may come down to a battle, sort of like, whether it's an argument or whether it's a legal battle or whether it's um, just a contract or anything. Selling a home, buying a home. Uh, new job contracts. There is an opportunity here, but I feel like as you get more information, more communication comes in about this. It's better to wait for right now. I don't. I can't really say why, but it's like spirit is saying, don't move too quickly on this thing. Be okay with taking a step back. Okay. Sometimes out of fear, we'll try to jump in and take anything we can get thinking like this is the best we can get. Do not settle in this case. Stand up for your own self here. Shine through because you are blessed and luck is on your side. Don't worry about this person who's trying to get one over on you. That can wait. And I think you'll, you'll figure that out and maybe find a better way to go about doing this. Don't end something, like don't jump into something just because you want it to be over with. So like, you know, you'll s sign anything or give in to anything because you want the situation to end. That's not going to be for every Capricorn, obviously, but it may be for, for some of you. Okay, thank you Capricorn. Let's jump to Aquarius. So 
So let's do these first. Aquarian energy, please. Tell me about Aquarius for the full moon in Scorpio with Pluto retrograde. Full moon in Scorpio for Aquarius, please. Aquarian energy. Aquarius. To the sea and serendipity. Okay, so both of these cards kind of make it feel like you're, you're needing some type of comfort. Do what makes you feel good right now. If it's going to the sea, cleansing, detox, getting away for a bit, going to a serene place for you, okay? And serendipity is like uh, finding joy and happiness in the little things and, and the synchronicities and how it all comes together. I really like that. Let's see what this card is about. 18 and 7. Serendipity. Opportunity allied with readiness. The awareness of synchronicity. Luck and good fortune appearing as signs and symbols. A magical alignment of events. So you stepped into an alignment with the greater good where your dreams and the collective dream resonate in exquisite harmony. So the things that you've been working towards and fighting for, or the things that come up now and show you proof of uh, these synchronicities and what it is that you're wanting, is falling in line with everything around you. It's all working together. So not only is uh, your career working good, but probably your relationships are feeling better too. Okay, um, Aquarius, this Scorpio and Taurian energy will be hitting you pretty hard because they're your fellow signs, um, fellow fixed signs. Okay, so there's a lot of fixed energy. Don't be too hard-headed. Don't be too stubborn. You are going to probably come up with some extra emotion um, and material things will be a hot topic. Okay, if you have cancer in your chart, you may feel that more strongly as well with Mars. There's just going to be a lot of emotion for every, a lot of emotion for everyone to deal with, right now. And Aquarius, you're fixed. All these energy and all these other fixed signs. Just don't, you know, don't be too sure about things. Try to stay flexible. And as Pluto shows you more and more, you will have to surrender through this retrograde and allow this full moon to bring stuff up. Don't judge it, uh, just observe it. Just let it happen and, and work through it. Tell me about Aquarius for the full moon. It seems like things are gonna be working in your favor, but you do need to have this to the sea. Um, this cleanse, I think. And it could be an emotional cleanse, you know? It could be having to remove some toxic issues and then things start falling into place for you. Issues or people, that is. Why do so many cards keep coming out? Sacred Reverence, 47. A Merry Motive, 20. And Birds of a Feather. Okay, so this is going to be probably a relationship. We have Sacred Reverence which means this is guided okay this is meant to be this is like fate i'm not sure if this is regarding someone else or this is a fated time in your life for something to occur but we do have birds of a feather so you may be attracting more into your social circle or someone new as far as a romantic relationship goes but we have a merry motive so this is like a, a good intention this is good things coming in for you and or a person who does have good intentions Let's get a moon card. Tell me about Aquarius for the full moon. Hmm. This is really good. I mean, you, you do need to cleanse some things out here, but as long as you keep a positive intention surrounding this and the sacred reverence, this is like really understanding and not taking things for granted. The things that are a blessing the things that are faded uh, and as spirit and God brings things in for you and your higher self it's just like finding your tribe or finding like-minded individuals it could be romantic relationship but 
Either way, it's like if you keep good intentions, things are gonna keep working out for you. Be bold and make the first move. So it may come down to you trying to find other like-minded people, or maybe you need to make the first move when it comes to a romantic relationship. Tell me about Aquarius during this full moon in Scorpio. Make the first move. That could mean anything. I mean, Spirit is just saying you may need to be the one that takes action here. Could be in a in a job. Could be in a in a romantic relationship. Twin flames. And we have done. Completion, lesson learned. Some of you may be giving up on a twin flame relationship, or uh, some of you may be finding your twin flame, or getting back together with your twin flame, or trying to rekindle things. It seems like you've gone through a, a lesson, a time of completion. This Scorpio energy is definitely bringing up a lot of time for healing for you right now. And once you can do that, that is a lesson learned. Then you can be done with it. Then you open the door for so much more. There's no more emotional resistance for those great things to come in. And we have the one. Pledged, mirrored souls. Sacred reverence. Birds of a feather. I mean, serendipity. It all works together. This is a really good reading for you. And as long as you keep these positive motives, merry motives, okay? Aquarius, some of you are going to be, if you don't know who your twin flame is, you, you are going to be meeting them. Okay? This isn't going to be for everybody. You don't, you need to research what twin flames are. Don't be thinking abusive relationships, getting back with an ex who never had the time of day for you, or always put other people first, or they're married, I'm just waiting for them to leave their karmic, no. That's not a twin. A twin cares for you and is drawn to you in the same way that you are to them. It's painful, yeah it hurts, you gotta go through stuff, you gotta go through drama and all that. But you're never gonna question how they feel about you. Twin flames can be a magical thing. Not everyone has a twin flame. Okay, so that's why I say this isn't going to be for everybody. But, uh... Yeah, new relationship, but you're juggling. Seems to be juggling or when it comes to finances, but you could be planning something when it comes to finances as well. If this is surrounding relationship, like you may be looking at financially could we make this work could we be stable together could we move in together that sort of thing this is juggling making plans weighing the pros and cons looking at a situation objectively and then we have ace of wands which is a new it's a new brand new start it's creation it's a hot passionate fiery start and i'm thinking some of you guys are going to be falling in love if if you get this lesson learned if you're done with this thing, if you're finally done with this thing, you go to the sea, right? Which means you're detoxing, you're healing, you're finding space, you're taking space, whatever. You're allowing this transformation to occur. You're going to notice everything falling into place for you. This healing has to be done first. Okay? And yeah, be bold and make the first move. You may have to. But it seems like it's going to be worth it. Okay? And yet, no, that's not going to be for everybody, but... For that to come out like that in an all signs reading, it may be time for Aquarius to finally be done and healed and, and find what it is that they're looking for in a partner. If the lessons have been learned. Okay. Good luck, Aquarius. Let's move to Pisces, please, Spirit. Pisces for the full moon in Scorpio. Okay, right off the bat, I'm hearing connecting. Pisces. 
they're trying to connect with you, you're trying to reconnect with the divine, um, or you're connecting with others, a group, someone who's like-minded. Uh, Pisces, sun or rising, this is going to be a year of isolation. So if you find one or two really good friends who don't judge you, who maybe feel the same way you do about life and the world and, and the changes that are happening, stick with those people, okay? Otherwise, you're definitely connecting to the divine. That's what this year is for. No distractions, transforming yourself through healing in the 12th house and isolating from the world in order to do that, to really connect and find your path and stay on it. Higher power. I can't make this up. Number four. Higher power. You're being guided, okay? This is a, a good time to connect spiritually. I just love this feeling from spirit. Like, Pisces, you're being wooed. You know, it's like falling in love with spirit, connecting with spirit. Falling in love with who you are and your path and, and what it is you're meant to do here. Falling in love with creation and your life purpose. Feeling that connection of the higher power. Like there's no doubt in your mind. And it's like spirit, the universe, God, creator. Your angels, they're calling to you. They're wanting to connect with you. Thank you, Spirit. Tell me about Pisces with this full moon in Scorpio. Remember, Scorpio energy is like one of the most psychic energies that we have in the Zodiac. Pisces is very spiritual and connected, but Scorpio can delve deep. Scorpio can go into past lives without even trying. Scorpio is really the depths of emotion and super sensitive and can pick up and intuitive pick up on those things um, like Pisces but it's a it's a deeper darker hidden aspect of the spiritual world um, and because the veil is thinning now you may be getting more signs than ever more messages than ever more synchronicity you know from the divine your psychic uh, spider senses could be tingling. Tell me about Pisces for this full moon in Scorpio. Oh my gosh. Number 38, endless possibilities. So this is your time now, Pisces, okay? Jupiter is going to be moving into your sign, which can bring blessings. Um, but it just brings expansion. And so being a Pisces, especially a rising Pisces, okay? Or with multiple planets in Pisces or North Node in Pisces, this is gonna be a huge time of expansion for you this whole year, basically. Once Jupiter goes into Pisces, um, I think it stays there maybe six months out of the year or three months and then it goes back and then it comes back uh, again in, in December just you'll have to look that up I don't know the exact dates but I think it's coming uh, May I want to say May 10th Jupiter will be moving into Pisces so watch around that second week in, in May that you feel expanded okay so right now what Scorpio wants you to do is work through some things heal some things take these messages be ready for the expansion that's coming okay this is like spirit preparing you for the endless possibilities that are to come when you're open you surrender to spirit and you look forward to this expansion please tell me about Pisces for the full moon in Scorpio You are good enough, full moon in Virgo, and don't let your past hold you back, south node. Okay, like, 
for some of you, you may have a Pisces North Node. And so your South Node is literally Virgo. So this is saying the Virgo parts of you and just any Pisces really, any sign is affected by its complete opposite sign. It's just by like default, you have to be. So Virgo is the exact opposite of Pisces. And so every Pisces has a little bit of Virgo tendencies, okay? Deep down in the depths or every now and then, or, um, or you may have issues with these, um, like not having enough Virgo. <laughs> so it just depends on your placements, but not letting your past hold you back is the South Node. So look at your North Node and you are good enough. And Virgo has so much insecurity. So let's not doubt ourselves during this time. Um, let's not think and focus on the past. We're need, needing to let go of the past right now so that we can move forward into this energy, into these endless possibilities, knowing we're good enough, letting go of any insecurity and doubt of ourselves. Because a lot of times Pisces will doubt their abilities. They'll doubt that they are connected to source. And you are. You're natural born healers, extremely creative and intuitive and knowing and connected. So don't doubt that for a second. Divorce, final divorce, irreconcilable differences. So for some of you, not all of you, you may be dealing with a separation or a divorce or, or this could be uh, letting go of that toxic energy in people. It may not be divorce romantically or like a marriage, but it may just be really letting go of some relationships or some bad habits that you had and like needing to let go of it for good. Pisces can have issues with escapism, you know, trying to go out or party or get lost in a book or get lost in your garden or, uh, you know, that's just one of those aspects, substance abuse. Um, so sometimes we need to let go of that. Sometimes we need to just say no more of this. in order to have this connection be long-term because that is your job, Pisces, okay? You're going to be helping people heal in the future. You're going to be helping people understand their, their innate abilities to connect and you are the best person to show that to the world. So now is the time for us to let go of those types of things so that we can put ourselves in the best position to fulfill our role here on the planet. We also have on the bottom, unconditional love genuine and certain love. So for some of you, you may be finding someone new. You may be understanding what it means to be connected to spirit and have that unconditional love. Love for your surroundings, love for the planet. And for some of you, you may be falling in love. And it says certain love. So not something you need to doubt there. For some of you, it seems you will be leaving someone else uh, like leaving someone for someone else. Or this could be uh, an issue from your past that ha that's coming up for healing. Okay, so if you've already found someone new, but you're still dealing with issues of, of a past divorce or past relationship that isn't fully healed, that's what will be coming up with the Scorpio Moon. Queen of Cups. There you are, my fishies. Queen of Cups in your energy, feeling, uh, feeling your truth, accepting that truth and how you feel. Queen of Cups cares for others, nurtures others, and is compassionate. Above all else, she is compassionate, she's understanding, and she's fluid. You know, any water sign. Aside from Scorpio, really, Scorpio is fixed, but Cancer and Pisces understand to be fluid. So with this Queen of Cups energy, and we have Ten of Cups on the bottom. This is you stepping into this emotional fulfillment. 
it seems that spirit is wanting you to be happy, wanting you to find your life purpose, wanting you to let go of this past pain, understanding that you're good enough, letting go of self-doubt, okay? Not letting your past hold you back. And when you do this, as you heal these things over this full moon and into Pluto retrograde, you become more of the queen or king that you are. And this is a happy family. This is wishes fulfilled. This is everything you've ever wanted. And I feel like spirit is saying, let me guide you. And as you surrender to me, you will have everything you ever wanted. And isn't that a blessing? And, that, and that's the message I get continually as a Pisces is just do this for me. You know, just listen to me. Let me guide you. Surrender to me and your life purpose. Don't, don't worry about how it's going to come together. Don't worry about figuring out the whys and the hows and the whats and who. Let me work. And when you let the universe take over, you won't have to worry about a thing. It's when we try to limit and control and figure out, well, it doesn't look the way I want it, or I thought it should be this way, or I pictured it this way in my mind, or let me just do this one thing, and then, you know, and... And then nothing works out. And Spirit's going, I've been trying for 20 years to give you everything you've ever wanted. Stop trying to control it. And that is Virgo, South Node. That is our opposite coming in saying, well, if I can just, well, let me just, and that stems from insecurity. We have to let go of that surrender to Spirit now, okay? Because this expansion is coming for you, Pisces. This healing has to be done, but there's endless possibilities for you and you are going to be stepping into your higher power and or your knowing and or at least feeling this connection deepen. I love it. I love it. Thank you, creator. Pisces, you got this. I'm really digging it. Let's go to Aries, please. Aries for the full moon in Scorpio. Aries for the full moon in Scorpio. Thank you. Tell me about Aries for the full moon in Scorpio. Tell me about Aries this week, what they're dealing with, Pluto retrograde, thank you. To be fair, number 38, whoa, there's like a cool queen there, can you see it? And she has a scale, she's holding a scale, and it says to be fair. Okay, well, No, my dog has a bone. Sorry, you're gonna hear her chewing, but I had to keep her busy. Okay, number 38, to be fair. Balance, justice, and need to consider options. So weighing out the options. Mutual benefit, okay? Making sure it's not just about you, not just about them, not just about, uh, whatever society and you get nothing out of it it has to be beneficial for everyone involved and also uh, the law of cause and effect okay so what you put in you get out vice versa this is the balance life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are that are nourishing yet over time they do strike a balance so that kind of feels like Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, you know, and, and it could be a period of up and up for a long time, and then you could have to go through a drought of just crappy, working through, healing things, but in the end, they balance out. So that's a good thing to remember if you feel like you've been going through a lot of tough times recently, that there's always good ahead. Tell me about Aries. So Aries, what is it that you're trying to trying to weigh these options or trying to find justice in a situation? 
a lot. You know what I'm getting for you? With the Scorpio moon, sometimes it's important to revisit uh, issues we've had with family or, or in the past or whatever and think back, you know, to that argument or that time or whatever. Or this could be happening right now in the present moment. It's important to, to ask yourself if you're being fair. You know what I mean? And that's part of the work. So it's like, did I say the wrong thing? Questioning yourself and your own actions. Like, am I playing the victim? Am I being too harsh? Am I only thinking of myself? Am I including them? Is it mutually beneficial? So I'm getting that that may be part of this healing process for you. And there may have been times where you, you were the victim and you blamed others when really you were just as at fault and you could have been holding on to that for a long time you know and so now the scorpio moon is asking you to forgive is it fair was it fair is what you're doing now fair and this is how the healing can occur tell me about aries for the scorpio full moon earth magic number one and that's you, number one. You're the beginning. You're the baby. You're the initiator. You're the spark. You're the magician. Uh, you're the creator, right? So, earth magic. That's what it makes me think of. Using the earth. The beginning. Creation. To create and manifest. Let's see what it has to say. But number one, that is you. Number one. I mean, you're first. You're the first sign of the zodiac. Let's see. You're really the last sign. You're the baby. Pisces is the oldest and goes back around. But you are the beginning of the wheel, so in actuality, you're the baby. You're the youngest. The self, right? Aries represents the self. Let's see. Number one. Earth magic, being grounded in nature, okay, spend more time in nature, the quiet, dark place where all things begin, where essence is first ignited before manifestation, okay, so it's the thought, it's the spark, it's the desire before the manifestation, knowing that you are part of the earth and she is a part of you. Wow. Okay, so, yeah. Using the earth, using your connection to nature to help you find balance right now. So it's going to be vital that you ground. Okay, go spend time in nature. Go on a nature hike. Go camping. Put your toesies in the grass. Go to the ocean. Whatever represents nature to you. And reconnect that revitalizes you within that spark you know of manifestation something flipped here we go new moon in Aries it's time to take action okay so you may be needing to ground right now before this manifestation starts to occur before you start to take action it is time to take action and it's your sign Make sure you're being fair, okay? Make sure it's fair to everyone. It's not going to help you karmically if, if it's better for you. And it's not going to help you karmically or those around you if it's better for them. Make sure you're not giving too much of yourself to something and, and vice versa, okay? Make sure you're not taking from someone or a situation. It's got to be balanced and if you're having an issue with that going into nature listening to the earth you can do meditations for Gaia and for the earth that will help you find balance within just natural balance and really brings a calming sense to your being tell me about Aries for the full moon in Scorpio There's that twin flame card again. Aquarius had that twin flame card. So
So for some of you, you may be dealing with an Aquarius. I don't uh, encourage that, but they could have a lot of Aries in their chart or Leo or something, or you could have Aquarius in your chart or Gemini or Libra, and it somehow works. I don't know. Fire and air can be, you know, kind of difficult, but it works. It's like an opposites attract type thing. Twin flames. So you may be dealing with a twin flame. You may be meeting your twin flame, but it says it is magnetic. Unexplainable pull that you cannot resist. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting these twin flame messages. This is probably the last final push the universe is saying, heal yourself. Use the Scorpio moon. Use this Pluto retrograde to tear down all the old parts of you that are keeping you blocked and resisting your future. And if you are, especially if you're calling in and manifesting uh, your twin flame, your life partner, yeah. A, it's time to take action. So you may already know who this person is. Okay, but don't ever stay in a relationship thinking they're your twin flame when it's abusive or when they don't, when they're not there for you, you know, or when there's lots of red flags. That doesn't, that's not a twin flame relationship. Okay, and sometimes people will assume that and so they stay forever and ever in a crappy relationship because they think it's their twin flame. That just jumped out. Strength. There's a Leo card. Could be dealing with the Leo. Aries and Leo are both fire signs, so that can be a little bit combative. But if there's other things in your chart that are nice and calm, that would be great. But inner strength, courage, okay? And if it's time to take action, maybe some of you are trying to let them take the first step. Um, this is someone from your past. Six of Cups. It actually kind of came out in reverse, which means some of you may be having a hard time with forgiveness. Okay, so you may be blaming this person, you may be um, playing the victim. Whatever healing needs to be done, you need to do that and forgive it and let it go. It doesn't mean that this twin flame is from your past. It does not mean that. It could mean that you have to forgive something from your past in order for this twin flame to come in. If you don't know who they are, or you may know who they are, but it may just seem like life circumstances get in the way. You know, and then they can't be. But what it may just be is in the other realms or in another dimension, in, in the fourth and fifth dimension, you could be hanging on to something that is keeping you out of physical distance from your twin. And this could be what they're doing as well. There's something that needs to be healed or something that needs to be said or given or something. Most likely from your past. Okay? Be fair. Forgiveness. Connect to the earth and ground. It is time to take action. So I feel once you do this, your twin can come in. It seems like you know who this is or you're about to know who this is because this magnetic card is like saying you already know how this feels. You can't resist this person. But if there's things that get in the way and it seems like it's just not meant to be or it's just not happening for me right now, definitely look within and see what are you still holding on to. What do you need to forgive? What do you need to maybe ask forgiveness from someone? Okay, and clear that karma. Clear that energy so you can start fresh in something new. Okay, we're all healing right now. It's just a matter of what, what aspects of ourselves that we're healing. Good luck, Aries. Let's move to Taurus. Taurus, please, spirit. Tell me about Taurus. Tell me about Taurus for the full moon in Scorpio. Taurus. Taurus, you got a lot going on. Uranus in your sign. Mercury. Happy birthday. The sun. And Venus. Things could be going really good for you right now. You're going to be having a lot of breakthroughs. 
But with this full moon Scorpio opposing you, you're going to have to heal some stuff. All that glitters, baby. Number 16. All that glitters, right? All that material stuff. What are you doing right now? You know the saying, all that glitters ain't gold. Let's look and see what it says. A need to see beyond the superficial, Taurus. I cannot say that enough. <laughs> the desire to don on a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature. Sometimes we don't want to admit when something stinks. We want to dress it up and spray potpourri stuff on there and pretend that everything's fine. Uh, maybe because the finances are fine, but maybe the love's not there. Maybe it's not working out for you. Maybe you hate your career, but you just keep telling yourself, it's great. Trying to be something you're not. Chasing after every sparkly new thing. Being mercurial. And Mercury's in your sign. It's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint and pretty and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it's, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, a big house, a title or position, the stamp of authority or the sparkling of diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place or thing, or do they? The truth is what people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Absolutely, because this is a time for healing for everyone. So the emotions that come up with this full moon, it's time to look past, look deep, look beyond. And I know sometimes that's hard for you, Taurus, to look beyond the earthly feels, especially with Venus here, okay, and the sun. You may be feeling in your element right now, and so it's gonna not feel too good to have to go a little bit deeper in this Scorpio energy and look at the hidden truths. Let the secrets come out. Allow yourself to feel these emotions and ask yourself what needs to change. Tell me about Taurus, Spirit. Taurus for the full moon in Scorpio. Grand Symphony. There's just too much here. I'm going to take this one because it's calling to me. Earth Magic! Aries just got that. Okay, so yeah, you are Earth Magic, firstly. This is about connecting to yourself and nature and what, what it feels like. That's you, I know. What does it feel like? What does it look like? How does it sound? What does it taste like? This is how you move throughout the world, but there's a deeper, hidden, spiritual aspect to us all. Earth signs are not. That is the true grand symphony within. This is the true aspect of like, you know, in the Bible, um, I'm not religious, but, and, and they made a song out of it too, where they sing, um, I don't want to lose, I don't, I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. Okay, so this is about acknowledging the deeper aspects of you, your deeper desires and things that you want that are not being fulfilled. Okay, that maybe you just kind of let go because on the surface they look good and feel good, um, but deeper within something is missing. The Grand Symphony, the main fulfillment, your soul's fulfillment, your life purpose fulfillment, the deeper parts of you that may not come up too often, but they're there. 
Connecting to the earth and grounding is especially important right now in nature. Connecting to the earth in ways that are not material. Maybe material as in your home, you know, going outside. But I mean, not the money, not the glitter, not the uh, fancy clothes and all that. That doesn't really matter. Let's see, Taurus. What are you healing? Tell me about Taurus for the full moon in Scorpio. Time to take action. Again, some of you may be dealing with an Aries. Okay, a new start is coming. This is for sure. You're going to take action and a new, a, a new start is coming. And uh, this goes for everybody. We're changing big time. Okay, over this this next decade, expect change continually, at least until 2025 to 2028. So basically, the rest of the decade, continual turmoil and change. We just have to get used to going with the flow. But right now, it's good for you to take action. Kid situation card for Taurus. What is Taurus dealing with? Obsession. Must have indulgence. Okay, this could be food. This could be money. This could be sex. Uh, we also have tragedy and forbidden love. Okay, so for some of you, you may be feeling overly sensual in this Scorpio moon. So be careful that you don't, you know, be too risque or dangerously looking for love. Also, you don't want to go outside of a relationship, you know, the normal advice there. Um, but whatever this obsession is, you need to ground. You need to get real, okay? This could be in a relationship for a lot of you. Tragedy or forbidden love. So, yeah, to me that feels like a very codependent relationship where someone is very hurtful, maybe even domestic abuse or narcissism, emotional abuse, um, where it looks good on the outside and you don't tell anyone, you know, and maybe you do really love this person, but you know deep down it only causes pain. That's just the kind of feeling I'm getting. Doesn't mean this is you. This could just mean your obsessions are leading to something not so healthy. Okay, so we wanna make sure we're not just focused on the superficial and the surface of things. And that there is this grand symphony within and this is the, that's, this is the, the part of you that is asking to be acknowledged. Okay, to be healed, to find the deeper meaning of life, to find the deeper aspects of yourself that are vital at this time to be healed, that come up, that are asking for attention. Maybe you're just like, no, no, no. No, no, don't worry about that. I'll deal with it later. <laughs> Everything seems fine right now. You know, money's good or... It's time to deal with that, Taurus. Let's see, we'll get a couple tarot. Tell me about Taurus for the full moon in Scorpio. A little bit more detail. A little bit more. A little bit louder now. The Hermit. Okay, Virgo energy. Could be dealing with the Virgo. Or this could just be obsession with knowledge. Doesn't seem like a very Taurian thing to do, but it's possible. Um indulgence in higher wisdom this could just be spirit saying you need to connect you need to take some time away isolate yourself from this thing whatever is driving you nuts right now or whatever is making you you know a little bit nuts this forbidden thing yeah uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta pull away from from the material world 
and connect to this earth magic that you have within you. This grand symphony that is asking to be sung, played, heard. The hangman. This is Pisces. This is a hesitation. Both of these cards are, are asking you to pause and reflect. Is this really what you want? Does this really feel good? Not just surface level good. Does this feel good within? Is it emotionally fulfilling you? Is it spiritually fulfilling you? Is this going to be good in the long term? Both of these cards are asking for reflection. Pause. Hesitation. Wait a, a minute. And re-look at the situation. And so is Pluto retrograde. Any retrograde for that matter. <coughs> matter. Take a second and look. Take a minute and look at this thing. Okay, you're going to have to take action and a new start is coming. How you deal with that is going to be based on if you allow this grand symphony to be sung, this feeling within, this emotion within, these parts of you that aren't being served or fulfilled, as you connect to the earth, let go of the material in this moment. Trust. Trust that you'll have what you need. Okay? Because all that glitter is ain't gold. Doesn't matter if you have the, the biggest house on the block and the nicest car if you're sad inside. One of the biggest life lessons for Taurus is Scorpio. Is to look deeper. Is to make yourself more vulnerable. Become more intimate in your relationships. Allow yourself to be more sensitive. Allow yourself to connect to spirit. Trust the universe. It can't all just be on you. You can't only rely on yourself. And Taurus has a hard time trusting others. Try to trust the universe. Okay? You will always have what you need. Have a good one, Taurus. Let's move to Gemini, please. Thank you, Spirit. Tell me about Gemini, the full moon in Scorpio. Tell me about Scorpio. I mean, tell me about Gemini for the Scorpio full moon. <laughs> tell me about Gemini. Gemini. Gemini for the Scorpio full moon. And Pluto retrograde. Gemini. Gemini, you may be feeling like you lost a little bit of your mojo. Because Mars left your sign and it's moved into Cancer. This is a lot. Change in the wind, unfinished symphony, and why. Okay, so yeah. Definitely. You could have lost your mojo. You could have lost your oomph in the last week. You could be feeling like you're drained, you're tired. And that's because busy, fast, aggressive Mars left your sign. And so that mental stimulation or that um, aggressive go-getter, get-stuff-done, action-oriented energy is gone now. And it's in Cancer. So now this is more about emotion. And Scorpio is about digging deep. You know, and, and Mercury is in Taurus, so this is about how you think and communicate and, and the reality of things, facing reality for what it is. So there's definitely changes occurring for you right now, Gemini, and there is an unfinished symphony. So what are you working on? You're going to have to deal with these transformations as they come, as we all are with Pluto retrograde, and it seems as though your focus may be too much on the why. Why isn't it happening the way I want it? Or why did this happen? Or, or why do I feel this change in the winds? Why, why is this transformation occurring now? Hmm. Well. There's always a reason why. 
something is not over, but something is transforming. Okay, you could be transforming or completing a lesson, moving past a period, getting over a big hump now, okay? Or you could be left in this energy of feeling empty, having to face reality. And now is the time where you may be questioning why, maybe fully looking at the lesson that's been learned. Okay, in order to move forward, tell me about Gemini. Full Moon and Scorpio, please. Tell me about Gemini, Spirit. Thank you. Time Machine, number three. Hmm. Let's read it. Some of you may be really feeling regretful. Feeling like you want to go back in time. Time machine, key concepts, inherited patterns, conditioning, lessons already learned, cellular memory, and honoring the past without being trapped there. Yeah, definitely feeling that. Honoring your past, honoring this change that has come, honoring those lessons that you've learned, even honoring the why, the feeling of wanting to know the why. Okay, and, and that deeper understanding that comes with it. We all signed up for this. And I know sometimes that's hard to hear. Why would I sign up for pain, tragedy, or hurt, or angst, or not having enough, or all of this? That's just not true. Okay, a lot of that is just our perception of things. All the lessons occur because you asked for those lessons and you wanted them. And your friends and your spirits who helped you learn those lessons, even you may think they're your enemies, they signed up to help you learn too. I feel a sadness coming from you, Gemini. It won't last long, you know that. You're very quick. And you won't stay bored for long. You may not even stay in this energy for long, but I invite you to do so to figure out what this is. Let go of all regret and guilt and shame and let go of what you feel others have done to you, that victimhood and blame, blaming others. I think it's a good time right now to just face it head on Understand it's something that you need to learn. Recognize the patterning. That's how you learn the lesson. Once you find the pattern, then you go, oh, this is just gonna keep happening until I change it. And it feels like now you're being forced to change it. Tell me about Gemini. Honor those things you've learned in the past. This energy is gaining momentum. Okay? This energy is gaining momentum for you. This change in the winds. This looks kind of like a tower card. It's kind of weird. There's like a zebra. And then... There's like this tower on top. And the winds are changing, but it just means that, yeah, the, the energy has changed, it's shifted, and it, now it's gaining momentum in a new direction. Tell me about Gemini. No. Proof. Pressure cooker. Show me the proof. Receipts. I want receipts. Show me. And pressure cooker. Rage. Ready to explode. This could be someone you're dealing with or it could be you. You may just be tired of hearing someone talk, you know? And you're just like, enough talk. Show me. 
There is definitely a change in the wind. Some completion has occurred, but every time there's completion, it's like a new beginning. But this unfinished symphony, there could still be this healing, this lesson that needs to be learned. And you're still hanging on to this past, this past person, this past thing. Maybe asking yourself why, asking the universe why, why did I do that, why did I... Do not keep yourself locked in that place of, of holding yourself accountable or to blame. Everything happens for a reason. And you're right here, right now, right where you're supposed to be, for a reason. You're never in a place that you're not supposed to be. So when there's urgency, when there's blame and guilt and shame or thinking, why did I do that 20 years ago? There's no sense. No sense in doing that. So right now, you're right exactly where you're supposed to be. I know. Isn't that a relief? Phew. There's a change in the wind. This change can occur once you let this go. It seems like you, you feel like you are under pressure. Maybe you're upset with someone and you're, and you're like, can you freaking show me already? King of Wands, you could be dealing with a Leo. If it's not Leo, it could be Sag or Aries energy. This is a fire sign energy. This could be you um, getting tough and saying, that's enough, I know my worth, uh, and I want to see proof, you know, or like, you're going to have to show me here, or you're going to have to prove it, you better work, that's what I'm hearing, like, you're going to have to work at it, and, and this is like you saying this, this is your energy, or you're dealing with someone who's saying this, this is like, I'm the shit and I know it, so get it together. Or I'm the shit and I know it, so why did this not work out in the past? Because I know what I'm worthy of. Stop blaming yourself. Some of you are really trapped in the past, unfortunately. Ace of Swords, a new communication could come out, a new truth, a new secret, a new shock, a new idea, a new inspiration. It's a new beginning. It could be a truth coming out. Um, this could also be you cutting someone out. Ace of Swords. With this energy. Scorpio, full moon. Cutting things out. Uh, cutting people out. Ending things. Or, brand new beginning. Inspiration. After the healing occurs. Okay, there's definitely something that has to be let go of. It's a past thing. And, uh, or this person just keeps you dangling or something. And it's like, you, you say all this stuff and then you never come through. And I'm always here just like allowing you to, to do this to me. So there's parts of you that are very upset. And it's par parts of you, some of you, parts of the collective of you, Gemini, who are upset with yourself that either you are where you are or that things didn't work out in the past and, the, and you can't go back in time. Okay? So, Gemini, deal with this energy. Allow yourself to heal. Allow this change to occur. You're going through a change. Now, you can allow it to happen or you can keep going through the same old lessons again and again. Which do you want to do? Thank you. Have a good one, Gemini. Let's go to Cancer. Hello, Cancer. Tell me about Cancer. You may be feeling more aggressive. Mars is in your sign. You may be feeling more, also more ambitious or more like a go-getter, action-oriented type of feel. Um, you may be feeling more sexual, more fire-burning. 
Um, be careful not to be too short with people right now. You know, argumentative. Mars can do that. But Mars will be playing off of your emotion. So don't let people get you upset, okay? You're, you're going to be more prone to overreacting right now. Tell me about Cancer, the full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio, which is going to be asking you to be more emotional too. Saying, what do we got to deal with? What's coming up? What still needs to be healed? Where's the secrets? Where is the dark hidden aspects of yourself? Tell me about Cancer, the full moon in Scorpio. Thank you. Blessed. 22. Capricorn got this. Which is your exact opposite. You're blessed. In your building, 22, Master Builder. And right now, with this Mars energy, I say, hell yeah. Heck yeah, you're building. Mars is here to push you through. What do you want to get? What do you want to have? Uh, and be careful about your emotional base as well. And the things that you're working towards. And that it's logical and not just emotional. But... Mars is definitely here to help you push through whatever this blessing is. Woo! A burst of magic! That's Mars! 48! Okay, Mars could be really good for you right now, I'm feeling. You could feel uh, this newfound energy to get stuff done. And that sounds like a burst of magic to me, but you are blessed. Some of you may be connecting more spiritually because of Scorpio. And because of your cancer, um, and the Scorpio moon will be doing that. Tell me about cancer for the Scorpio. No. That's too many. I'm just going to do them all, okay? Because they may resonate with some of you. Bring love into the situation. Okay, you may need to be more loving, more compassionate in the situation. Mars, I'm telling you, Mars is going to make you more antsy, more aggressive, more like, nah, I'm shutting it down, this conversation's over. <laughs> so try to be compassionate, hear them out, whatever the situation. Adjustments are required, that's what I'm saying, you got to watch your mouth, Cancer. And balance spirituality and practicality, yes. Okay, that's what I was just talking about, connecting to spirit. Things are changing, you're going to have to deal with that and be adaptable. Okay, bring love, bring more love into the situation. And you're going to have to constantly remind yourself. Because Mars is just going to have you in this energy. Okay, you might feel a little bit uppity. So just watch it. Balance practicality with spirituality. Like I was saying, if, if whatever you're pushing for, whatever you're building right now, it has to be balanced. If it's too spiritual and you got your head in the clouds, it might not work logically on the earth plane. If it's too logical and not connected to spirit, maybe you're not going after the right thing and not the right path and then it won't work out for you. So listen to both. It has to be both. Tell me about cancer. Tell me about cancer, please. You are getting a burst of magic, so use it wisely. Make sure it's connected in spirit and rooted in spirit. Access granted! Hey, so for some of you, this is a key. Some of you, cancer energy, you might be getting a new house, changing up your home, buying a new house, selling your home. But it also says access granted as in uh, social media, fake profile, pretending to be something you're not, watching someone on social media, um, trying to break into somebody's social media accounts. I don't know. That's not for everybody, it's only for some of you, but the key is, is making me think of a home, okay? And cancer energy is home, so whatever's going on in your home, bring the love into it and make sure it's balanced. Anything else for cancer? Projected. Projected, hmm, future days, weeks, months. So you are planning something or you're buying a house or something is planned uh, or projected blessing perhaps, this burst of energy. Mars might be working on something with you over the next um, six weeks or so. 
of 10 weeks. Six weeks? I'm trying to figure out how long Mars is in each sign, is I forgot. Okay. Projected future days, weeks, and months. So there's something going to be coming in for you. Okay. So whether you're expecting something, an investment to come back, a return of an investment, um, something with a house. Or, or business. It, and this could be related to family. Whatever it is, it's like you're expecting something to come in for you in the next couple weeks or months. Dude, some of you may be buying your first home. Let's see, social media. Be careful with the social media thing, okay? Don't be trying to spy on people and stuff. That's not good. And if you're doing that, you're needing to look within at your own insecurities. Remember that this full moon in Scorpio is going to be asking you to heal things. Okay. Tell me about cancer for the Scorpio full moon. Tell me about cancer, please. Two cards for can. Thank you. Okay, Ace of Swords. The truth comes out, perhaps. Or this is just a new inspiration, a new beginning, and you're the Empress. Empress energy, or you're dealing with an Empress energy, uh, which is Aries, which is a beginning, new beginning, a birthing of a manifestation. This 22, this is you building something. You're creating something, or you're expecting something to come through for you, and you, you're very, not just blessed right now, you're very fertile when it comes to what you're creating, okay? So use this time wisely, use this Mars energy wisely to get this done. This could be a new inspiration, a new beginning of something that you, you're wanting to create. The Empress, uh, in some cases, could be pregnancy. But, um, I mean, if you've been trying for a baby and it hasn't happened, now may be the time. A lot of new uh, souls and, uh, not new soul, new to the planet are wanting to come through right now and they're needing very high vibration mothers and fathers because they're coming in at a very high vibration okay so there has been fertility issues but I don't know why I'm saying this for some of you this may be the case it could be a pregnancy but for most of you this is just creating something new it's something brand new and you have this but I mean with just looking at this Blessed, burst of magic, brand new idea, the ability to create anything you want. And this thing is projected. This thing, it's like you know what it is. Okay, access granted. And I'm really not feeling the social media thing from you guys. So this more feels like the universe saying access granted. Like, yeah, you keep this in check, this Mars energy, and you use it to, to the highest uh, evolutionary level, you know, maturity wise. Like, not letting it get you angry and aggressive, but letting it use that speedy energy, that action-oriented energy that you need to get this thing started. Adjustments, okay, are required. So you, you stick with it and you stay adaptable. And you bring love into the situation. Make sure you're always coming from a good place. This looks really amazing. Something really good coming in for you. I feel like a lot of you know what this is already. Okay, something you've been working on, and now it's like, now spirit is giving you the energy you need to do it. So don't take advantage of that. Use it. Thank you, Cancer. Let's move to Leo. Leo, please. Leo, tell me about Leo. Full moon in Scorpio. For some of you, this will be affecting your relationships, this energy, Leo. And for a lot of you, this is affecting your career. This is about you stepping into your life purpose, 
finding out more about your career um, in your future, this thing that you've been wanting to find or create or, or develop. And can also be affecting long-term relationships. Message in a bottle, number 15. Is that for Leo? Leo. I suppose it is. Let's just see what it says. Number 15, that could mean something to you. Message in a bottle. Communication. Getting a sign. A cledon. A cledon. The ancient name for a spontaneous oracle delivered innocently by the speaker, which means you may hear someone say something and you were just talking about that with someone else, just thinking about that, just read it in a book, and it's a message to you and you know it is, but that person had no idea they were giving you the message. You know what I'm saying? So picking up on the synchronicities that you're getting. And this message, okay, will be pointing the way to your highest good. So... Leo, you're connected to the sun, you're connected to the source of God, always, the creator. Everything comes back to the creator, it has to, for you. So, Leo, you're going to be getting a message, or you have been getting a message, or you will be getting a message with the Scorpio full moon. So, what is the message? I imagine it could be different for all of you. What are you asking for? Ask for the signs. Ask that you be open to seeing the signs. And then you may want to journal those, you know? You may want to write down all the synchronicities you're seeing. Tell me about Leo for the full moon in Scorpio. Tell me about Leo. The full moon in Scorpio, please. Leo. Some of you may be getting some sort of advice about your career. Uh, you may have been questioning things with your career already. And then this advice helps uh, turning point. I'm hearing a turning point. So whether it makes you more comfortable in coming to a conclusion, making decision about your career, or points you in the right direction of a, of a new career. Tell me about Leo, please, for the full moon in Scorpio. Leo. Searching for answers. Some of you may feel a little bit lost right now, or maybe you will be with the Scorpio moon. Remember, the Scorpio moon is bringing things up, okay, and so you have to deal with it. Some of you may feel like you're just going with the flow, just accepting things for now, but really deep down you're like, you, you're really wanting answers, or you feel like something is amiss, like something needs to change, and you may not know how to exactly go about doing that. Well, this message in a bottle, these synchronicities are going to be coming to you. Why aren't you talking to me, Leo? I mean, you're talking to me, but thank you. Willing release. Okay. So, the Scorpio moon as well allows for release. Letting things go. Letting relationships go. Letting career options go. And this is beautiful little daffodil, dandelion. I always get confused. The one that you blow, make a wish. You know when they fly off, that is a release. Number 49, let's read it. This is a willing release, okay? This is about not something being stripped away, but something willingly given up. Yielding to the divine plan, surrender. Releasing attachment to form, especially if something isn't what you expected or wanted. And this is what I just talked about when I went through the whole spiel of things not looking how you th thought they were going to. Relationships not turning out how you expected. Career not turning out how you expected. Uh, the world not turning out how you expected. 
leaving room for serendipity. So allowing these things to occur, allowing for these synchronicities to come in, giving the space, which means taking a step back and just observing, not looking for signs everywhere, but just being in a higher vibration where, where your state, I wanna say where your state is like flat. Okay, so you're, you're not up and down, you're just accepting of everything that comes your way. And when you're in that vibration, you're just observing, you're just noticing. And that's a higher state of joy and, and that acceptance. Being in that state of allowing, there's just something about the surrender and letting go. Leo, that's big for you because God is your ultimate connection. Source is your ultimate connection, the sun. You are so connected when you're in a state of trying to figure things out and not allowing, that's not your natural form. That's not your natural state of being. So you have to breathe it out. You have to let it go. You have to be willing to release certain things that aren't working out for you, okay? These things, I feel, will be blatantly obvious. Surrender is huge right now. That's what I was talking about. If you didn't watch it and you just skipped to this timestamp, you should go back and watch about this whole Scorpio full moon for everybody uh, and the energies that's coming up. Because we're, we're going to need to heal things. We're going to need to allow these things to come up and, and allow for connection to spirit. And, and things aren't going to be turning out the way we thought. So being in this willing, willing state of release, come what may, kind of attitude, uh, in a positive way, you know, expecting good things, uh, will really benefit you right now. So watch for the signs, be willing to surrender, the end of a tough cycle approaches, okay? So there's definitely an ending coming, um, or just an ending of an emotional, issue or maybe the surrender itself ends a cycle for you because maybe you've been trying to control everything and, and figuring out how to make things work the way you thought they should okay when really you just needed to let it go that may be what brings this ending of a tough cycle but you have to remember and i'm only saying this because on the card it says full moon and capricorn okay the end of a tough cycle means um, like Capricorn is this hardworking, stable energy. And so it's like you've done the work, you feel as though you've put in as much effort as you possibly can. And with Scorpio here asking for release, asking for emotional release as well. And Pluto going into retrograde, which is in this Capricorn. It's like acknowledging things aren't always going to go the way you want it, no matter how much work you put in. And that's why sometimes you just have to get out of your own way and just let it go. Tell me about Leo. Plugged, tuned in, internet or connected. So I'm definitely thinking you guys are gonna be more plugged in to source more plugged into your higher self and creator and your angels and, and witnessing these synchronicities you're going to at least feel more connected and and when you're in that state witnessing those synchronicities and you see it playing out for you working out for you the angels coming in giving you guidance and and you have that feeling of connectedness there is nothing better you know you're taken care of you know that there's really nothing for you to do except you know take action on the things that come about you don't have to go out of your way to find things. It's gonna come in for you when you're in that state of flow and connectedness. So it seems that this is where you're heading. This will allow you to end this tough cycle. Okay, and you're gonna feel more connected. This isn't gonna be for all of you, but just for some of you. We have escapade, going on a vacation, taking a little hideaway or adventure. You may be taking time for yourself, getting away from others, spending time in isolation, or having to just get away and go to the beach. 
go on an adventure, go have some fun. That that reminds you of the renewal of nature and and letting go and that surrender and that connectedness. You know, brings renewal. And sometimes we need to be in nature to do that. And then we have pop up, spontaneous, unexpected surprise visit. So expect a pop up. You might get a phone call. You might get someone show up to your house, someone you haven't seen in a while, um, or you may be doing a spontaneous getaway. That makes sense. Unexpected adventure. Let's see for Leo. There's you on the bottom, the sun. Let's see. Dang it. Okay. Tell me about Leo. Two cards, please. Tell me about Leo, okay? So we have Six of Cups. This is giving, giving and receiving, possibly energy, a gift. This is someone from your past, possibly forgiving, forgiving, asking for forgiveness. Um. Someone could be popping up from your past this week. Or this could be emotion popping up from your past, asking to be healed. Options. You may feel like you have more than one option right now. You may have someone come from your past or a job offer come from your past. And you may feel like you have lots of options. Um, this can also cause confusion. So with this card, Seven of Cups, it actually it goes six, seven. So that's a little synchronicity there. This is like healing the past to move forward. And when you heal the past, your options do open up. More job opportunities, more relationships, whatever it is that you're in need of. With this card, it can be kind of fantasy. So it's important not to get... Um, if you can see there's like all these cups and they all have different things and it can cause confusion Okay, someone may be coming um, from your past that really needs to be healed But for some of you you may look at it as if it's a new opportunity Instead of just healing um, for some of you it may be a new opportunity so That's gonna be up to you to decipher But you are plugged in you are connected if there is an unexpected visitor or an unexpected Emotion that comes up definitely deal with it. There is something from your past here. So whether that's the emotion coming up um, But you're plugged in as long as you Stay in this uh, state of flow and you're willing to release things uh, Good things can come in for you. It seems like you'll have multiple opportunities and options but be where that confusion can occur when that happens sometimes it's more fantasy or illusion of multiple options when in reality only one is the best fit. You know what I mean? Sometimes we make out, make it out to seem like we have all these choices um, and that causes confusion for us. Uh, when in reality that was like a little bit of illusion and we really only have like one or two choices. Sometimes it's a little bit of fantasy that plays in with this card. So just be aware of that. Definitely something going on with your past. You may need to forgive someone or you may, um, you may need to stop blaming someone, you know, and get rid of any victimhood that you have. Be aware of the signs that are coming in for you, Leo. Thank you. Let's go to Virgo. Virgo. Virgo, how are you? Tell me about Virgo. Virgo, things not going as planned. Could be feeling that with the Pluto retrograde. Scorpio, of course, will be bringing up things for you, emotions, causing you to be more sensitive, uh, maybe causing you to feel more insecure than usual. Asking you to heal your past. OK. 
Okay, but Pluto in retrograde in Capricorn, your fellow Earth sign, and all this stuff in your fellow Earth sign Taurus, you may be hopefully feeling more materially stable with so much in Taurus. But you may also be feeling like things aren't, things didn't work out, or things that uh, an unexpected shakeup might occur that uh, you need to change things because of it. Um, so in that case, it would be things aren't as stable or secure as you thought just because of the retrograde in Capricorn. Okay, but we have you Virgo, flexible. Number 19, stay flexible, be open to change, okay? Be adaptable at this time because things may seem like they're not going the way you thought or planned. And I know that's hard for you Virgo, but the good thing is you are adaptable. Um, even though it's frustrating, you can do it. You know, and you can look at the details and find the best way. Very Virgoian of you. I don't know how to say that. Virgoian. I don't know. Okay. Tell me about Virgo for the Scorpio full moon. Thank you, Spirit, for your guidance. Please give us clear messages, clear and concise interpretations for Virgo. Nope. Too many, but thank you. A powerful move, number 15, and a grand symphony, number 27. Taurus had that card, a grand symphony, okay? So this is about things coming together, the beauty within, the inside of you spiritually uh, that needs to be fulfilled as well as outer security you know having what you need as far as money and all that stuff inner security spirituality feeling connected feeling fulfilled in more ways than one romantically all the ways a powerful move is coming okay if you stay flexible you may be physically moving but it feels as though you have a chance now to let this inner light shine. You may be given a new opportunity here when it comes to career or in love. It's important that you remember it may not go how you plan, but this is what's going to give you the opportunity to really shine because you have to stay flexible here. It's going to force you to kind of show your true colors. You have to be allowing, surrendering that things may not go the, the way you planned, but it's still a, a great time to shine and show that you can handle anything. And that would be a powerful move. Tell me about Virgo. Tell me about, thank you. Time to take action, okay. So you gotta stay flexible, okay? Things aren't gonna be the way that you want them to, but you still got to be there and, and be ready to take action. Lockdown. Okay, some of you feel uh, that you're in a mental prison or confined. Be careful not to be too controlling and too uh, critical of yourself. I know you're critical of other people. You're mainly critical of yourself, but that has to go. The control issues right now have to go. You have to let go in order to stay flexible. We already know things aren't going to go the way you planned, okay? Sorry. This grand symphony within, how things come together, the beauty of creation, which is all about the virgin energy, which you are. The beauty of creation and new beginning and earth, Gaia, right? Creation, the earth itself. Do not allow yourself to feel locked in this energy that you have to do things a certain way. You don't. That's a pressure that you put on yourself, Virgo. You don't need to do that. The, po the most powerful move you have is being able to adapt because you're so detail-oriented. You're so able to see the big picture, see how it works out, see the next step. Your ability to do that in itself, if you can stay flexible, you're unstoppable. That is the most powerful move that you have. The ability to let this grand symphony play shine, allowing others to take part as well. We all know Virgo knows the best way to do things, but you have to let others try, okay? Stay flexible. It's time to take action. 
it's okay to be adaptable right in the moment know the next step if you can't figure out the next step uh, in that moment you know you just gotta turn it it's like one of those uh, Rubik's cubes you gotta turn it you gotta look at it from a different angle see what else is around there see what else can be done and you're really good at that I don't know what this lockdown energy is but you may be feeling confined as if you don't have any other choices but that's not true um, you may be looking at the situation too critically like it has to be a certain way and it doesn't so is there anything else for Virgo make sure you stay flexible we have anxiety scared and panic and we have insatiable unquenchable wanting more okay so you guys maybe really feel stuck right now or you're not getting uh, the credit that you deserve you're not getting more money, whatever it is that you're wanting. And I don't know why you're in this state of fear or panic or anxiety and, and it's like you're stuck here. You have to let this go. <sighs> Do it with me now, okay? <sighs> you have to be flexible. You have to be open. You have to surrender and allow these things to fall into place for you. You are not the last uh, what am I trying to say here? You're not like the key component. Okay, everything works together in this grand symphony. You do have a powerful place, but your most powerful move is staying flexible. You have to let go of this anxiety. It's gonna work out, but it's gonna be different than what you thought. It's okay. This fear, this confinement, this is you and your own self. You're keeping yourself here. If you're feeling insatiable or wanting more, okay, Ask spirit for more and be flexible for those signs and symbols to come in. Be flexible for how it looks. It's not going to look how you wanted it. And you may have all the things that you ever wanted moving forward. If you stay flexible, if you allow it to come in in another way. That is Uranus energy in Taurus. That is doing things a different way. Trying another way trying in a unique, rebellious, different form that you never thought of. Yeah, this is you expecting a certain outcome, okay? Three of Wands. It's like, I've been working at this, I've been putting in the effort, and it's not going how I want it. I'm waiting to see these results. I'm waiting to see it come together. And so what Spirit is saying is stay flexible. Stay open. This, I'm telling you right now, this energy of lockdown, confinement, anxiety, stress, trying to control things and get, being freaked out about it, is not going to make it come to you any faster. It's not going to make it work out for you quicker. Letting go, come what may, allowing this energy to come in. This is the main thing for everybody right now. And we also have a single woman being single or just self-sufficient energy, okay? And... I think this is your energy, actually. Nine of Pentacles. Definitely is Earth, but I'm not sure if it is Virgo completely. Um, I think it is. Please don't mind the background noise. Anytime I make a video, my all my neighbors like to come outside and mow their grass and cut their trees, and that's like the time of day they want to do it the most, as soon as I make a video. So, I apologize for that. But we do have this energy of self-sufficiency and then maybe that's what you're looking for maybe you're looking for more independence in some case this is a single female um but it's like you're wanting things to come together but you have to stay flexible so i don't know if this is about a relationship or if this is about money but either way a sense of independence or an independent woman or a man or whoever you're attracting or whatever it is you're attracting it can't come in if you're in this energy this super confined, upset and anxious energy. You gotta be flexible, Virgo, that's it. All right, you gotta let it go and that might be the hardest thing for you to do, but that's what Spirit is asking of you. Allow for this Grand Symphony to play. Allow others to play their part, including Spirit and the universe. You know what I'm saying? You can't do it all. And no one's expecting you to, except for you. So hypercritical of yourself. 
Oh, I feel so much better when you just breathe. Okay, Virgo, you'll figure it out. You always do. Let's go to Libra. Libra. Lovely Libra. <laughs> what is today? Saturday? Two more days to the full moon, and then Pluto retrograde. So, fun times. Make sure you check out to see where Scorpio is in your chart. That will really help you with this full moon energy, but for most of us, we're letting go of things, we're allowing things to come up and heal. Um, for some of us, it's relationships. For some of us, it's the way things are turning out around us. Um, things not going as planned. Um, you know, things not looking the way we thought they would. So what are we going to do about that? Tell me about Libra. Tell me about Libra, the full moon in Scorpio. Tell me about Libra, please, for the full moon in Scorpio. Thank you. Poised, number 48. So you're ready. You're poised for greatness. You're ready for the next step. Whatever it is, you've been prepared. Thank you, Spirit. Tell me about Libra. Tell me about Libra. Poised. Hmm. You could have been preparing yourself for something. You may have been planning something and you feel that you're ready for it to come into play. Um, but this card kind of makes me feel like for some of you it is planned, pre-planned. For others of you, you have no idea what's coming, but you're ready. You've, you've been prepared by spirit. Okay, Call of the Muse, number 31. That's like the, the performer, right? And number 20, a merry motive. So, a good thing, a happy thing, a joyous thing, a good intention. Let's see what this Call of the Muse is about, number 31. Creative expression, being in the flow of creativity, tuning in to, to inspiration, allowing creativity without being self-conscious. Okay, so who cares what other people say or the judging of others? And that's hard for you, Libra. It really is. You do care a lot about what others think, whether you want to admit it or not. Writing and journaling as a means of connecting. When you feel the call of the muse, you're being invited to create, to be the artist choreographing your life, serving on behalf of the great artist, the divine source. So serving others in the most creative way possible, allowing spirit to flow through you, when you're connected to source, you're in your most creative state. You don't even really have to think about it. It just comes to you, right? Like if you're painting, or let's say you're a carpenter, you work with wood, or you're, you know, a performer, whatever it is, it just flows through you when you're connected. So not only are you in this state of higher creativity and connectivity, Okay, but you're poised for it. You've been prepared for this and you're ready for it. So the hardest thing for you may be letting go of what others may think on just being authentically you. And it's more than just authentically you. It's when the source is flowing through you, you know you're being used as, as a tool to reach others, to help others, to serve others, and to serve the divine. So let's read this, A Merry Motive. Knowing your own motives, understanding what drives you to meet your goals, the momentum your attention creates, the wisdom behind your intentions. You've chosen a path, you've set an intention, and you've begun to move toward a goal. You feel compelled to keep going, but do you know the why behind this drive? Do you truly want what you're pursuing, or are you chasing a destination with the anticipation of how it will make others feel about you. Hmm? Do you really know what it is you're after? Or are you just after the superficial or the, the, the effect of what it is you're after? What you think it will do for you. How people will look at you. How you'll feel about yourself. 
based on how other people look at you. These go hand in hand, don't they? The call of the muse, not worrying about what other people think, and the motive, checking your own motive and being sure that you have good intentions despite what other people may say or think about it. You are poised for a new direction, I feel. Something brand new coming in. And it's like you want this thing, but maybe the only thing holding you back really is, is how other people feel about it. And if you're afraid others might not like it, this could be keeping you from doing it. Or you may be trying to do the wrong thing and not following your life path simply because you think it will be more accepted by others. Or you'll have more of a... Time to take action. So many people are getting this, and it is time to take action. We have that new moon in Aries, and the answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. Okay, so the answers you need are coming. Don't worry about it. You're poised, you're prepared, you're ready. Two things you need to do. Make sure you don't care about what anyone else says or thinks about your creative flow. Okay, if you're connected, that's all you need to know. You're going to be helping people, regardless. There may be naysayers. Who cares? The merry motive. Checking your own motive. Why do you want to do these things? Why do you desire this change? And is it what's best for you? What are the motives? The answers that you need are definitely coming. And that will help you take action because it's time to take action. Pressure cooker. Feeling like you're about to explode and drastic, extreme, harsh, cut off. You may be about to, to make a huge move here. Cut people out, cut people off. Um, change in a drastic way. Change careers, move. Uh, let go of family members or relationships. But it seems you are in a pressure cooker and it's time to make a decision here. Uh, and it may seem harsh or drastic, but... Seems like you know what you need to do. And it's going to be what's best for you in the long run, not everybody else. Knight of Pentacles. This is a slow moving thing, okay? You know it's moving towards something more for the long term. And it will be good in the long term, but it just may take a while to get there. It's not going to be quick. There is an opportunity or some sort of action being taken towards... This could be career, this could be something different, like a hobby that actually brings you a second income or, or a source of security or stability. What else for Libra? Um, you could also be dealing with an earth sign. But this is like taking action towards a thing, knowing that it's gonna be a while. Like it's gonna take work, it's gonna take effort and discipline. And you really got to check your own motives. And to get there, you can't worry about what anyone else says or thinks about you. And it will lead to great success. A lot of money, a lot of happy family times, everybody fulfilled and feeling secure in who you are, secure financially. It's long-term stability. It may take you a while to get there, but it's worth it. Okay, I feel you will be making a big change soon. And you know you need to make a change because you're in this pressure cooker. This pressure cooker is part of what is preparing you for this shift. You are being called to, to be this creative flow of source. And it's going to be in a way that you want. You're not going to be called to do something that you hate doing. Okay, and the only reason you would hate do, doing it is if you care too much about what people think. Deep down, you're going to love this thing because Source wouldn't give you a passion or a life purpose doing something that you hate. You're going to love it. So check your motives. Check that the things that you're doing are for the right reasons. Okay, it works out really well. You can let those things go. Let go of what other people say and think about you. It doesn't matter. Source is giving you an opportunity for big change. If you can do those things and you're willing to be disciplined and work hard at something. It looks really good. Thank you, Libra. Let's jump to Scorpio. 
Scorpio. Oh yeah. You guys, he might feel pretty good. Emo as usual, maybe a tad bit more emo. But there's so much Taurus energy now. Uh, that may help you to feel more grounded. And with Venus and Taurus, you may be more drawn to uh, sensual energies and love and beauty, good food, feeling comforted. And keep in mind that Uranus is there too, so there could be shocks, there could be secrets, there could be uh, unexplainable, unexpected kind of changes. And when Pluto retrogrades, you can expect that as well. Treasure Island, number nine. What's good about Scorpio is, with the Scorpio, Scorpio full moon is, um, Scorpio's already so sensitive. And they've already dealt with so much emotionally that you may not have too much to deal with. Um, I mean, stuff will come up, you know, but a lot of Scorpio deal with that kind of stuff often. So it won't, it shouldn't be as intense for you. You will probably feel more emotional than usual, but it's a good thing, especially if you've already. So, Scorpio, my battery died. Sorry. So what I was saying is, you will still have things coming up that need to heal. Um, but I'm hoping it won't be so harsh on you because you're more sensitive and you're used to that kind of stuff. So, tell me about Scorpio, the Scorpio full moon. Tell me about Scorpio. Tell me about Scorpio, please. Tell me about Scorpio. Okay. Spirit wants to read this first. I was gonna wait, but <laughs> gotta do what Spirit wants. Okay, Treasure Island, number nine. It's a cool little sea turtle here with this, some treasure on his back. The law of attraction bringing dreams into fruition. The results of positive thinking made manifest. Abundance appearing as if from nowhere financial gains, and the sharing of good fortune. So, this is, looks really good for you. Moving into this uh, treasure island. This could be in, in an emotional sense. This could be financially. This could be both. Um, this could be something you've been working on and manifesting. That's kind of too many. Awakening genius. Oh, you guys got your creative things going a new stage of, of awakening you could be feeling some pulsation in your third eye call of the muse definitely creative not worrying about what other people think about you a merry but these same ones just came out for libra you guys may be dealing with the libra working with the libra a merry motive and call of the muse just came out and then we have awakening genius so i'm going to say to you like i said to libra uh the call of the muse is about using your creative energy that flows through source in your connection to source and awakening genius. I mean, Scorpio, you have a psychic nature. You're very intuitive. When you're connected to source, you're unstoppable. You are creative. All water signs are, and you have this treasure Island. So what are you manifesting? Things look really awesome for you. And that may be pushing you towards a more creative, uh, involvement. You may be for the first time in a long time, really devoting yourself to your passions and your creativity. And in doing so, it goes hand in hand with the creator, right? You're more connected, you're more creative. Or you're more creative, you're more connected. They go together. And then we have the merry motive, which is what are your motives in doing so? Is it to serve God, to serve others, to serve your highest good and your life purpose? Is it to um, have people look at you a certain way or believe that you're a certain way or make you feel good about yourself or whatever it is. We don't want to do it for other people in order to have their blessing or how oh, they think I'm this type of person now. You know, 
That never works out. I don't think you're doing that, but this is just saying check your motives. Don't worry about what anybody else says. You're connected to your own genius and your source creator. You're moving towards something awesome. Treasure Island. Money, emotional blessing, whatever it is. Tap into this creative energy, okay? Performing, painting, music, um, making art, making clothes, whatever it is that makes you feel you're in your creative flow. Tell me about Scorpio. <laughs> Expect powerful change. Wow. New moon eclipse energy. So, definitely. Big change coming in for you. I feel like it is financially. Uh, and this is going to be based on you allowing your connection to source and your creativity to flow. I feel like the more creative you are, the more money you can make. The more passionate you are about this thing, the more money it's going to bring you. The more emotional happiness and fulfillment it's going to bring you. Wow, this is like a life-changing event. This is like turning your life around completely type of thing. Like, like you, it changes everything. Today, wow. Today, present now in the moment, live for today, and that helps you stay connected. When you're, oh, we have another one. TikTok, a deadline or time running out. You may have been feeling like you knew you needed to make this change, you knew you needed to devote more to your passion and your creativity because that's when you're in the flow, that's when you're connected to source, that's when you're the happiest, okay? but. Life gets in the way, right? We got bills to pay. We got stuff to do. Blah, blah, blah. That's all 3D stuff. That stuff doesn't matter. I know it feels like it matters, but it doesn't. When you devote to your passions, you have everything. When you're connected to source and you're allowing source to flow through your creativity, creatively, you're helping everyone and the money flows to you because you're doing your life's work. Hey, stop it. Fancy has a bone. Sorry if you hear her mouth. It's gross. Okay, tell me about Scorpio. Tell me about Scorpio, please. Thank you. Yep, brand new, passionate, emotionally filling beginning. Ace of Cups. This is like, if it was romance, this is like in love. Brand new relationship in love. If this was creativity, which I feel that it is, and abundance, the cup runneth over. This is just like, oh, it's a very emotionally fulfilling time. You have everything you need and it feels good. Thank you. Page of Cups. Uh, this could be a need for a conversation. This could be a need to be authentic, speak off the cuff, kind of speak your heart to somebody. This could be you thinking about talking to somebody um, or having a conversation or somebody coming in to speak with you. Page of Cups is like, could be an offer, could be a proposal, um, but it's more of like thinking about it. Thinking about a proposal, maybe wanting to propose to somebody, or you may be about to propose to somebody, um, or thinking about having a conversation, going to somebody and offering maybe a position, maybe going for an interview, thinking about interviewing for a new position, or just thinking about starting a new business. It mostly involves love, um, like a loving communication. It could be an apology. But it's like thinking about it. Thinking about forgiving, apologizing. This could be going over the healing that the Scorpio full moon is wanting you to do. You may be needing to apologize to someone. Um, but with these two together, it kind of feels like a proposal of sorts. It kind of feels like very happy in love feeling or wanting to like um, take someone out on a date type thing. You may need to forgive someone, you may need to apologize, or someone may be coming in to apologize to you. 
whatever it is, there's a lot of healing right now. There's a lot going on in families, healing, uh, things like that. So make sure that work is done. You have a lot going for you this week. Um, that looks really great. And uh, for the next few weeks as this full moon energy progresses. So good luck to you. Stay in your creative flow. And um, be open to the healing that Scorpio full moon wants us to accomplish. Thank you, Scorpio. Let's jump to Sagittarius. Okay, Observer, 49, Sagittarius, Observer, the Watcher, Observing, let's just see what it says. Perspective, Objectivity, Neutral Observation from a Distance. I talk about this a lot because staying in a neutral, objective standpoint is really important for all aspects of life, but whatever it is you're working on right now, Sagittarius, it's, in, it's so important to just be the observer. Allow these emotions to come up now because we're healing so much. Sag, you've been healing a lot the last the last year anyways um, with the south node being in your sign. It's about letting go of things, okay? Uh, transforming. And be careful with ideologies and in the search for truth, okay? Try to stay neutral. Spirit, tell me about Sagittarius with the full moon in Scorpio. What is Sagittarius working on? What do they need to do? Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Oh my. Into me, I see. You guys have definitely been uh, connecting to Source as well over the last year. This allows for the transformation, allows you to let go, okay? And you're definitely turning into a butterfly if you're doing the work. Into me, I see number eight, infinity, building, abundance. Into me, I see. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. This is like being really authentic, you know? Intimacy, trust in another, dropping shields and rigid boundaries to allow connection, the willingness to be vulnerable. At certain precious moments, you're called into a deep and meaningful connection with the world or another person. A magical affinity arises with the kind of intimacy that in turn encourages a great a greater understanding of yourself. The relationship acts as a mirror, helping you to see your own patterns. What it reflects about you can further your own personal evolution. This could be with um, family members, distant relatives, friends, getting close to somebody and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And as you do that, as you trust, it does help you to learn more about yourself. It's kind of freeing in a sense when you can let go and and be vulnerable. It helps you to be more authentic. It helps you to be more of you. And I think it, it allows you, like that was just suggesting, it allows you to see yourself like in a mirror. There are certain soulmates who will be this mirror for you. It could come at any point in time in your life to where you learn things simultaneously. It could be a best friend, it could be a spouse, it could be whatever. And you seem to kind of go through the same things in different ways. It's like you learn the same lesson through different people in your lives and you can come together and talk about it. 
And so that person is your mirror in a way as you both learn things together, help each other, bounce ideas off of each other, etc. So this is really great. Both um, the observer and into me I see involve being neutral, being vulnerable, um, being the observer, and allowing for openness, allowing for the surrender, for the divine to step in. Tell me about Sagittarius. Tell me about Sagittarius. What do you need to release? Yep. Scorpio full moon wants you to release. What is toxic in your life? What emotional baggage are you carrying? What pain and hurt still needs to be healed? Lockbox. Lock Closed in, trapped, frustrated. Some of you may be keeping something locked away. That's what needs to be healed. Okay, this thing will keep you trapped. You may not feel trapped, but you can't attract the things that you want and manifest the things that you want when you have this deeper need for healing within that causes blocks, it causes resistance. Um, to, to your manifestations and so it's always going to feel like there's one more thing in the way there's one more thing in the way when really spirit is asking you to deal with some of the baggage that's holding the space it's taking up the space that really wants to be taken up by the amazing blessings and things that want to come in we have to let go of that old negative stuff that's holding us back so it's really important and the observer fits in here well where you don't blame anyone else, you stop blaming yourself, just see from a very neutral place. No one's to blame. Um, everyone should be loving and kind and compassionate. Be compassionate with yourself. Forgive others. Ask for forgiveness. Forgive yourself. And uh, allow for just allow that stuff to come up. You know, cry it out. We have anxi anxiety, scared, or panic. So sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable. Sometimes that can cause panic in others. Uh, I mean, in yourself when you have to be vulnerable with others. But you know, Sagittarius, in some ways, has a hard time being vulnerable with others. Um, they have a hard time with obligation to others. They like to feel free. They like to come and go and make up their own mind as they go and, and find truth as they go and rediscover and adventure and and sometimes it's hard to be held accountable and responsible to others you know Sagittarius is a mutable sign they come and go they're very fluid they change their minds uh, and so not all of you will have those aspects very strongly. It depends on what else is in your chart. But at the heart of Sagittarius, it's kind of like Pisces where they're known for escapism. They're known for running when it gets hard. They're known for building up defenses, you know, and, and it's hard to let that wall down. If they look pretty strong on the outside, it comes down to allowing yourself to be vulnerable. You have Page of Cups. This is speaking, having a conversation, having a heart-to-heart, -heart, an apology of someone coming to speak with you. It could be a proposal of some kind, um, maybe like a job interview, something like that. You, okay, I feel like there's a conversation that needs to be had uh, with a family member. For some of you, it could be like a best friend or someone that feels like a family member, okay? And I think that you're not knowing it, but this person is actually one of your soulmates. And you may have issues with this person, and it could be, you know, those situations where it's like you're just too much alike? And, and then the aspect that you're different, that's all that you see is the aspects that you're different in. Like it may cause you to fight. It may cause you to not want to be around each other. But when it comes down to it, this person is your mirror. You learn to get along with them. You transform your entire self. That's what this feels like to me. You have to release a block 
that's keeping you from connecting with this person. And it's not just about the person, it's you. You connect to yourself through this person and being the observer, staying neutral without judging this person or what they've done, allow yourself to see the ways that you are like them, the ways that they are your mirror, all the things that you can learn from them. Because right now, until you do this, until you allow for this healing, with this person, and this may happen in your dreams. This may not be face to face, okay? You may be having conversations with someone in, in dreams. But it feels like for some of you, you're afraid to go to this person and talk. Like this person has caused a lot of pain for you and anxiety, and it may just be that you both misperceive each other, and you're actually both very much alike. I don't know why I'm getting this, um, and it's not gonna resonate for all of you, but. There is a conversation, an apology, forgiveness, something that needs to be had here in order to see each other as you are, in order to see into your own self, in order to grow. And it's like maybe you have anxiety about talking to this person. <sighs> but this is the sun, could be dealing with the Leo. This is happiness. This person could be a mother or father figure for you or a child, uh, one of your children. You know, it's a, it could be a, a parent-child relationship. Um, but after you have this conversation, new opportunities arise for you. Um, abundance and other forms of security. It could be emotional security or it could be financial. But what I've been telling everyone is when you let something go and you face this fear head on, if it, whether it's having a conversation, forgiving them, apologizing, whatever it is, it can go back and forth. Staying neutral, really accepting, being loving, compassionate for who they are, who you are, not blaming anybody. Once you do this, the relationship transforms and you become happier okay it, it's very joyful experience and once you let this stuff go you're opening the door for so much more opportunity to come in all of the blocks and resistance that you may have had disappear because all along this soulmate of yours was trying to teach you something and you were probably trying to teach them something too because they're your mirror you both have to do this. You both have to, to work to heal each other. You're gonna have to heal, I mean, on your own too. But it's recognizing and seeing them in you. Seeing you and them. Seeing, witnessing yourself. This is really powerful reading for you, Sagittarius. And good things will come and happiness will come once this conversation is had. Once this forgiveness and apology or whatever is had made okay so don't be worried don't be panicked you need to release this and stay neutral and good things will come of this okay thank you sagittarius hope you have a great week enjoy your full moon in scorpio please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one